Hey everybody, in class we did a lot of work with Laplace transforms and we even used a Laplace transform to solve a differential equation. In this video what I'd like to do is work a little bit more with finding Laplace transforms and I'd like to introduce to you a couple of properties of Laplace transforms to help with that. I want to start with this Laplace transform right here. So right now the only way we know how to do this is using the integral definition of a Laplace transform. So we can plug our function into that definition and we can do just a little bit of algebra. And now we have a polynomial times an exponential in an integral, so we know that we have to use integration by parts. Note that uh, integrating your dv to get v actually involves a small u substitution, and that's where we get this right here. I'm going to plug all this stuff into our integration by parts formula, and now we can integrate this term here one more time. Now since this is an improper integral, we need to replace infinity with a constant and take a limit. We can now plug in our limits of integration. We're plugging those in for t, since our integral was with respect to t. And now we need to take these limits. Now, obviously, since this is an exponential here and this is an exponential here, um, this limit is either going to go to infinity or it's going to go to zero, depending on what that number is right there, whether it's positive or negative. We're not interested in a Laplace transform that doesn't exist, so we're going to say that 3 minus s has to be negative. Then this limit would just go to zero. Another way to say that is 3 is less than s, or s is greater than 3, of course. The limit of this term here is also going to be 0. That's slightly more complicated, and we did one like it in class. Um, it requires that s has to be greater than 3 as well. But we also had to use L'Hopital's rule to do that limit right there. Now what are we left with? Well, the only term up here that doesn't go to 0 is the last one. And it looks just like this, 1 over 3 minus s squared. I'm going to rewrite that as 1 over s minus 3 squared because it's a more standard way to write that term. The reason we're allowed to do this, of course, is just because uh, this term is squared. Technically, um, flipping these two terms involves pulling out a negative, but that negative is squared, so um, these two terms are the same thing. So the point of all of this was to recognize that doing this entire integral up here was the same as the integral we'd have to do if we were finding the Laplace transform of just t. Remember what we got when we just did the Laplace transform of t was 1 over s squared. Now when we do the Laplace transform of t times e to the 3t, we get the same answer except we've replaced s with an s minus 3. You can actually see that pattern starting all the way up here. You'll notice that this integral looks just like an integral that we would do to get the Laplace transform of t. The only difference is we've kind of messed with this s term right here. And it actually turns out that we've replaced s with an s minus 3. That s minus 3 carries all the way down into our final answer. So the question I have now is, could we come up with a general rule for what happens if we take the Laplace transform of a function that's multiplied by some exponential function? This is actually going to go really quickly. Let's take a look at what this integral would look like. Okay, here it is. Now it's just a little bit of algebra. And now in order to make this look a little bit more like the original Laplace transform formula, I'm going to pull a negative sign out of this. And now look at what's left. We actually have something that looks exactly like the Laplace transform definition, only with an s minus a where we used to have an s. So in this class, the notation for Laplace transform of f of t is capital F of s. What we have over here is that exact same formula, except instead of an s, we have an s minus a. So the notation that we're going to use for that is just capital F, not of S, but of S minus A. I'll just copy down the left-hand side of this formula, and there it is. We can put that in our Laplace transform table. Let's just do a really quick example of how to use this. Let's find the Laplace transform of e to the 2t times cosine of 2t. Now whenever you see an exponential function multiplied by something else that you know how to take the Laplace transform of, I would just write down what the Laplace transform of that other function is. So the Laplace transform we learned uh, of cosine of 3t is s over s squared plus 9. Now what does this e to the 2t do to that Laplace transform? Well, it replaces s with an s minus 2. So everywhere we see an s, we're going to replace that with an s minus 2, and that's going to be our answer. So all we had to do was take the Laplace transform of cosine of 3t, and then replace all the s's with s minus 2. Let's take a look at one more property. I'm going to look at this property a little bit backwards. I want to ask the question, what happens if we take a derivative with respect to s of a Laplace transform? 
Now notice that this is an integral with respect to t and a derivative with respect to s. There are actually rules that tell us when we can and can't bring a derivative inside of an integral like this. I'll just tell you that we can actually do it in this case. Now if s is our variable of differentiation, this f of t is just a constant, this t here is just a constant. Now when we take a derivative with respect to s, what we actually bring down is a negative t. And what we get is a Laplace transform of not f of t, but negative t times f of t. Now I'm going to take that negative sign and pull it out of the Laplace transform, just like we could with an integral. And I'm going to bring that negative sign over to the other side of this equation, and I'm going to write down the new property that we just came up with. There it is. And what this equation says is, taking the Laplace transform of t times some function means that you can take the Laplace transform of just the function f of t, that gives you capital F of s, and take a negative derivative with respect to s to get that Laplace transform. This concept can actually be expanded because every time we tried to take a derivative with respect to s of our Laplace transform up here, we would pull down a factor of negative t in our integral. And that would give us this formula right here that basically says that you can multiply a function by t n times, and when you take a Laplace transform of that function, it's the same thing as taking n derivatives of the Laplace transform of f. Of course, there's a possible negative sign out here depending on whether or not n is uh, even or odd. Let's take a look at an example of this kind of problem. Let's find the Laplace transform of t times cosine of 3t. Now what you do in this case, since cosine of 3t is multiplied by t, that means we can take the Laplace transform of cosine of 3t, and using this formula right here, we know that we need to take a negative derivative with respect to s of that function. So that's just going to be a quotient rule. And you simplify things here, and you end up getting this function right here. Um, remember that we had a negative sign out in front. I put that right here, and then I ended up distributing that through the numerator. OK, let's review the two properties that we just came up with. The first property says that if you're taking a Laplace transform of a function that's multiplied by an exponential, you can just take the Laplace transform of the function itself, f of t, and then replace s with an s minus a, a being the power uh, in the exponential. The other property that we came up with says that if you multiply a function by t and you want to take the Laplace transform of it, you can take the Laplace transform of just the function itself and then take a negative derivative with respect to s of that Laplace transform and get an answer. Okay, let me get you a video quiz. Here it is. Find the Laplace transform of that function right there two different ways. This is one of my favorite video quizzes. You'll notice that you can use each of the two properties above to find this Laplace transform. One way to look at it would be, hey, this here is a function, t squared, and it's multiplied by an exponential, so that means something according to the first property we talked about. The other way to look at this is, hey, this e to the 4t is a function, and it's being multiplied by t twice, which means you can use the derivative property. So find this Laplace transform two different ways and you should get the same answer. Try it out.